This video was brought to you by Tom Man Toys and Comics. In the beginning, there was. The 1980s were such a weird time for kids' movies. Whether it be about aliens, ghosts, monsters, you name it. It was such a weird time to be alive. But one film that definitely reigns supreme in terms of the weird 1980s films has to be Howard the Duck. I mean, this movie is a holy grail. It has terrible acting, a terrible shallow plot, and a very inconsistent tone. And excuse me for coming out of the gate bragging about this movie because Howard the Duck, it's, it's bad, but it's good bad. It's so bad that I love it so much. And that's what really matters. When I first watched this movie when I was a kid, I hated it. However, over the past few years, this movie is kind of starting to grow on me. I can't say that it's good and I'm not really a fan of it, but it's one of those movies I kind of like to watch just to poke, poke fun of it. Though over the years, the movie has gained a little bit of a reputation as being one of the worst films ever made, and was a Razzie winning film. However, it has since gained a cult following. This is pretty much the Chicken Little of the 1980s. Though personally, I prefer that movie over this film. Yeah, I said it. But why does this movie exist? Well, I looked into the history of this movie, and what I found is actually kind of interesting. There's a lot of things that went wrong with the production of this movie. So sit back, relax, eat a nice meal or snack, while I'll tell you the tale of what happens when you take a simple Marvel comic and turn it into a god-awful movie. This is the horrible production of Howard the Duck. So in order to talk about this movie, we need to talk about George Lucas. That's right, the man behind Star Wars. Back when George Lucas was in film school, he met two people. Willard Hayek and Gloria Katz, who all three would go on to work on a film called American Graffiti, which was a huge hit. One day, George Lucas told Willard Hayek and Gloria Katz about a comic that he read called Howard the Duck, which he really, really liked and wanted to make an adaptation based on it. So the film was optioned by Universal Pictures, who actually had a partnership with Marvel Comics. Both Willard Hayek and Gloria Katz suggested that the film would be animated. However, George Lucas wanted to make the film live action because animation, well, it is really expensive, and animation could sometimes take too long. If I were in this situation, I probably would have made the film animated, but that's just me. In 1984, George Lucas stepped down from being the president of Lucasfilms, his studio company, and just start producing movies including Labyrinth, Howard the Duck, The Land Before Time, and a few others. Both Willard Hayek and Gloria Katz actually wanted to make the film a little edgier and dirtier. Think of this as a 1980s Deadpool in a way. However, Universal wanted a family picture instead of an adult film. Now that just sounds like a poorly wasted opportunity, don't you think? For the original script, the movie was supposed to be more like a film noir story, being much darker like I mentioned before and more adult. However, Frank Price, one of the uh, CEOs of Columbia Pictures and Universal, wanted to make a film that would be very similar to, to Ghostbusters, which at the time was the highest grossing comedy in history at that time. Come to think of it, both Ghostbusters and Howard the Duck are almost kind of the same movie when you really think about it. Or the Howard's voice, John Cusack and Martin Short actually tried out for the role, but the one that actually stood out the most was Robin Williams. Robin really hated doing this film that he actually quitted one week right when production started. So Williams was replaced by Chip Zian. Now, one of the hardest things that was really hard when making this film was Howard's design, mostly because he looks eerily similar to Donald Duck. So the team had to be super careful about design choices. Speaking of designs, one of the more interesting thing about Howard's movie was the marketing. When you look back at Howard's marketing, one of the gimmicks was to sh not show the actual character. The reason for this is to build up hype and mystery. Though it wasn't just for the posters, literally the trailers and the commercials literally had to hide his face the entire time. So you actually had to go see the movie in order to see his entire design. 
Here's a little lesson for everybody who wants to be in film. If you're gonna hype something really, really big, you gotta make sure the design looks good. Or else people are gonna get really pissed off about how bad the design could be. I'm looking at you, Godzilla 1998. That's like if you were trying to hide the Sonic the Hedgehog movie design and its marketing, and instead we got this design. That would have been really unsettling. Not only was this the first Marvel movie ever made, but also this was the first movie ever to digitally erase cables, as seen in the beginning where he's flying off to space. Howard the Duck was released on August 1st, 1986, and it was a disaster. Although critics did like its visual effects and music, critics panned the movie for its acting, tone, writing, and the physical appearance of Howard. The movie was also a box office bomb, grossing only $38 million on a $30 to $37 million budget. Yikes. I mean, this movie did have to go against a few films during the summertime, so I can't really necessarily blame that it bombed. But it also shows you that even bad word of mouth can cause a film to bomb. Though believe it or not, there were plans for a sequel, but we all knew that was not going to happen. Over the years, the movie has been considered to be one of the worst films ever made. However, like I said before, the movie has gained a cult following from fans of the comics. Though thanks to the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Howard was given a second chance to be in cameos in movies. Though rumor has it, Howard the Duck is the reason why Pixar started, but that's a different story for a different day. So, overall guys, I kind of feel bad for this movie because this movie could have actually been good. If the movie had a PG-13 or an R, stay true to the comics, change Howard's design, and maybe write a different story, I think this movie could have actually been a lot better than it could have been. Then again, that's Hollywood for you. Though to be honest, I hope someone does reboot Howard the Duck one day, because there is potential, if done by the right people. So while I don't like this movie, or I'm not even a fan of it, I do appreciate just how chaotic and batshit crazy this movie is. And that was the horrible production of Howard the Duck. Man, am I parched. I'm gonna go and lay down for a little bit. I'll see you guys later.